A very good evening to our dear viewers of Emory TV. I'm Naika Brenda to give you the headlines. If you want to join Emory TV, subscribe on YouTube, like our page on Facebook and Instagram as Emory TV Kakeka. Let's get the headlines. Court dismisses the opposition election challenge. Violence erupts as kidnapped in Nigerian schoolgirls turned to families. Three media workers dies in eastern Afghanistan. The risk of an Ebola outbreak spreading to Guinness neighbors is very high. Interimu government calls on UN to publish reports on vote buying. In Nigeria, violence erupts as a number of about 279 girls who were kidnapped from Jankabe Government Girls Science Secondary School have returned to their families. Winnie has a story in details. It was supposed to be a joyous reunion to the end of the five-day ordeal of 279 girls kidnapped last week from Jiang Bay Government Girls Science Secondary School in a remote corner of northwest Nigeria. The trend of kidnapping children from boarding schools was started by the Jahist group, which abdicated 270 schoolgirls from the northeast in 2014. Cheering children had lined the street as buses brought the girls, gearing and waving back to their school from the Zamfara state capital, Gusau, where they had been cared for since their release on Tuesday. Relatives crammed around the buses, and parents laughed with joy as they found their daughters. As the government officials in a hall were giving lengthy speeches in front of the girls, Impatient parents burst in and grabbed their children to take them home. The officials ran out and shortly afterwards, gun shoots were heard outside the gate where the police was firing tear gas at a group of protesters. At least three people were hit by the bullets, but it was not immediately clear by whom. Nantes Awin, MRUTV. In Afghanistan, three female workers at Ankas TV were shot dead in Afghanistan city on Tuesday while heading home from work. These were recent high school graduates aged between 18 and 20. Brenda has a story in details. Three media workers were shot dead in the eastern Afghanistan city on Tuesday while heading home from work. Local broadcaster Ankas TV said the woman killed were its employees. Zalma Latif, director at the station, said they were gunned down into two separate attacks after leaving the network. Latif added that they were going home from the office on foot when they were shot. The three women were recent high school graduates aged between 18 and 20. No group claimed responsibility for the attack and the two other people apparently passers by were wounded in the shootings. Police Chief Juma Garuhamad said an armed suspect was later taken into custody following the shootings, adding authorities were still looking for the other culprits. Hamad said they arrested him as he was trying to escape. He has admitted he carried out the attack said a Taliban member. However, Taliban spokesman denied the group. Afghanistan is considered one of the most dangerous countries in the world for the media workers. Tuesday's killings brought to 15 the number of media workers killed in the country. Last six months, the killings have increased since peace talks were launched last year between the Afghan government and the Taliban. Naiga Brenda for MRI TV. Let's go for a commercial break. A glance at the aim of regionalism empowerment. When you take a sport or either take a deep look at the way the aim of regionalism department is devoted to the practice. It is hands-on to every participant and backed by the Wellstock Studios of Rio FM and Aim Rio TV. The department has fed the group of practice with outstanding personnel backed by professionals in the practice. And it is seen from the products of the different students. Take a glance at every sector. The Rare FM has all the required machines and personnel to release a well-backed student. 
Emaru TV now has some of the most competitive programs in the media world. It is Mutesa Wanru University Journalism Department. Welcome back from a commercial break. In Ghana, the Supreme Court rejected an opposition challenge to the December 7th 7 presidential elections saying allegations of fraud lacked evidence. Shafiq has a story in details. The court on Thursday rejected an opposition challenge to the December 7th presidential elections saying allegation fraud lacked evidence. Jen Mahaham, a 62 years old former president, demanded a rerun after official results gave him 47.36% of the votes against 51.59% of his revival. Hanan Akufu Adon. He accused the Electoral Commission of inflicting the votes tally in the favor of 76 years old incumbent. However, the Chief Justice Kwes Anini said the allegation of the vote was not approved by the credible evidence and therefore there was no reason to order for the rerun. On January 6th, mayhem broke in the parliament after the lawmaker from the ruling party tried to seize the assembly but box during the votes for the speaker. The ensuring clauses lasted for several hours until the army moved in with the national television broadcasting the drama live. Mayhem in the election immediately after the match chose the Akufu over abusing the power, saying the armed forces featured immediately as intimidating measures to show the outcome. It is not uncommon for the election results to be contested in Ghana where Akufu and Maham were running against each other for the third time. In 2012, it was Akufu who contested the victory of Maham. After eight months of deliberation, the Supreme Court rejected his claim and upheld Maham's win. And I remain Kawiya Shafiq Mawiya at MRIO TV. In a Guinea, World Health Organization officials says the risk of an Ebola outbreak spreading to its neighbors is very high and that some of those countries are not prepared for vaccination. Stephen has a story in details. World Health Organization officials said on Friday the risk of an Ebola outbreak spreading from Guinea, its neighbors, was very high and that some neighboring countries were not prepared for outbreak of future vaccination campaigns. World Health Organization representative George's Alfred Chizobo told a virtual briefing that cases had been identified and four of those people had died. So far, 1,604 people have been vaccinated against Ebola in the new outbreak in Guinea, the first round of the viruses since 2013-2016 outbreak, the world is worst, which spread to several other West African countries and killed a thousand of people. MRIU, Robo, Stefan. In Libya, new interim prime minister has called on UN expert to make a public report that alleged vote buying ahead of his elections. Jolam has a story in details. Libya's new interim prime minister, Abdul Lamid the Baiba, has called on UN experts to make a public report that alleged vote buying ahead of his election. AFP news agency reported that the UN panel said in a confidential report that at least three participants had been offered bribes of hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Baiba to gain power. On Tuesday, the Prime Minister's administration issued a statement calling the report fake news and demanding the UN experts to publish their report on allegations of bribery at the Libyan Political Dialogue Forum, LPDF, in November. The report was prepared by UN experts tasked with examining breaches of an international arms embargo on Libya and is to be presented to the Security Council later this month. Libya has been mad in conflict since the 2011 NATO-backed uprising against longtime ruler Muammar al-Gaddafi. Since 2015, the North African country has been split between two governments, the UN-recognized government of national accord, DNA, in Tripoli, and a rival administration in the east, allied with the renegade military commander, Khalifa Haftar. 
The two sides agreed to a permanent ceasefire in October after Haftar's failed bid to wrest control of the capital from the DNA. Joran Paul Sonko for MRU, Libya. Thank you for watching Poco Poco News and liking and subscribing. I've been like a brinder.